Whilst waiting for the train to depart Finsbury Park Station, I glanced east and noticed the retro-styled Rowan's 10-pin bowling sign. Originally a horse-drawn tram depot, 10 Stroud Green Road became the Vink Cinema in 1909 and has operated as Rowan's 10-pin bowl since the late 1990s. Later in the day, at Andrew Gilman tweeted me a photo of the sign illuminated. Thank you, Andrew. Having decamped at King's Cross, I made my way along Gray's Inn Road and encountered another illuminated sign above the Star Pharmacy at number 81. The sign is a thing of tarnished beauty. At the end of Gray's Inn Road, one's eyes are assaulted by the hideous Tudor facade of State Berlin, which unfortunately didn't succumb to the Great Fire of London in 1666. Not only is State Berlin hideous, it signals you've entered the City of London. The city cloaks one in filth, filth from its avaricious practices. The red and white topped bollards a reminder, should you forget, you're in a financial cesspit. Still, the city's not all bad. These St Paul's Churchyard railings on New Change are wonderful. I adore railings. Having made my way through the city, I crossed the Thames via London Bridge and decided to shoot some stock footage of the warship Belfast, which was fabricated in the Harland and Wolfe shipyard Belfast, Northern Ireland, and launched on March the 17th, 1938, St Patrick's Day. From the Belfast, Tawley Street was followed until it became Jamaica Road, by which point I was in Bermondsey. You know you're in Bermondsey by the atmosphere and surroundings. Walk that stretch of road and you'll see what I mean. Bearing south onto Lower Road, I headed towards Deptford. I like Deptford, it's real, earthy and unpretentious. It also possesses an abundance of admirable terraces. I'm tempted to say South London terraces appeal to me more than those north of the river, being often clean, functional and demure. With two thirds of the distance covered, I encountered the 1903 built Deptford Fire Station on 186 Evelyn Street. Despite its Queen Anne style, any structure featuring a mansard roof resembles French Renaissance to me, and French Renaissance architecture is best avoided. The station's saving grace, however, is the mood-improving deep red paint, utilised for the large doors, which pleasingly contrasts with the neutral stone-built ground floor. Chelsea Fire Station exhibits this same pleasing contrast. Rounding the corner from Creek Street onto Greenwich Church Street, I spotted the Art Deco 1932-built numbers 13 to 14 Nelson Road. It was constructed for the Burton's menswear chain, designed by in-house architect Harry Wilson and possesses their signature elephant head capitals. French Renaissance bad, Art Deco good. Unfortunately Greenwich was all downhill from here, illustrated by this quote from Tarquin. There were queues outside every artisan, bucket and spade shop, hand-hewn iPhone case emporium and antique white dog shit cellar. If you stopped in the middle of the road in Greenwich, the achingly hip, in their own minds, would form a queue behind you, bedwetting half-wits. Greenwich needs to get over itself. It's not cool, it's depressingly suburban. Greenwich Park boasts a bandstand, and bandstands are cool. This classic Victorian example was erected in 1891, with the metal cast by the Coalbrookdale Company, Shropshire. 
I've expressed my admiration for bandstands many times, and parks bereft from these structures are parks in name only. Across from the bandstand lies the Royal Observatory, where according to Tarquin, Idiot moon landing believers claim they can see the American flag on the moon, instead of a studio where everyone capable of tying their own shoelaces knows the nonsense landings were actually filmed. Unusual in London's parks, Greenwich's hills provide splendid views over the city, if you're partial to capitalist pig dog skylines, that is. Covering 180 acres, you'd think it was one of London's largest parks, but it's not even in the top 10. Richmond, with an area of 2,360 acres, is the largest, and on this mild February afternoon, the 180 acres was hosting visitors aplenty, fulfilling the purpose of a public park. Was Greenwich Park worth the seven mile wander from King's Cross? Definitely, it's a fantastic space.